we got the pro boat horizon harbor tugboat on the block all right uh this boat it's fantastic you guys me and my son we absolutely love it it's uh it's made several rescue missions the short time i've had it um the, the scale, the, the looks of the boat, it's definitely a head turner. It's a conversation piece, to say the least. Okay, um, the last time me and my son had it out, we were running the, the Mini Mono. The Mini Mono and the Tugboat Take Your Kid RC Boating uh, video. And at the end of the video, um, well, at the end of our trip, I didn't even have it on camera, but the boat was making us a, a, like a noise. Okay, and I think I've narrowed it down to this universal joint. Um, it, it was, it was, it, the boat slowed down quite a bit, all right, and it started making a little chatter. Looking around, you see that, that brass piece right there on the universal joint? You see it's not spinning with the, with the universal joint. Okay, it's got, see that set screw there? Okay, so it's either missing a grub screw or something else could be going on with the boat. So, uh, so we're gonna check it out. All right, so um, stick around, stick around. Big B here with Ironclad RC. I like little boats, and I just can't lie. So I hope I got you guys a good view. All right, I think I'm just gonna try to pull the motor. If that, if that. Universal joints missing a grub screw. It should just pull right off that shaft so we can kind of see what's going on here uh, I guess it's just these two screws to get your motor out. This, this motor is actually air-cooled. Okay There's vents in the cabin that allow air in and out of this boat. So that's kind of nice All right, and let's see if this is free if it's just missing. Okay, so that pulled right off all right spline universal joint so let's try to get this guy right here out might need to use some heat i don't know if they use red loctite or what mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so i got the the universal out all right this is a five millimeter motor shaft to a four millimeter propeller shaft all right straight shaft um I found the culprit, all right, the splines in this plastic universal style joint here actually stripped out when we loaded to propel her up with weeds at the pond. We ran through some weeds trying to clear it out with power with this big 700 size motor and we basically stripped the, the plastic universal joint, okay, that spline. Um, I think just to get the boat going again, I've got some fiber uh, fiberglass and epoxy this is fiberglass hairs mixed up with epoxy it makes it nice and thick what i go what i'm gonna do just to get the freaking boat back on the water all right don't have to wait on no parts i'm just gonna put some epoxy in there those little splines should hook up nice all right that should hold the epoxy on there and uh get the boat back on the water okay super simple fix like i said five millimeter motor shaft four millimeter drive shaft so these things uh pretty plentiful online ebay amazon you can find them maybe even horizon hobby has them as well but uh you can upgrade this universal joint to a, a stainless steel uh universal joint and you shouldn't have any problems like this uh pretty simple upgrade all right <clears throat> so far like i said this is the weakest link everything else works without a hitch on the boat yeah you could see all the weeds we had on the prop i got most of it off but uh, that's basically what did it right there. That's basically what did it. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm gonna clean this up. I'm just gonna kind of hit it with some, with some 80 grit. Just kind of rough it up so we get a good, good bond. Don't want to make the hole any bigger. Just want to kind of rough it up. Get any kind of stagnant grease or oils that may be on it off. So we get a good bond. <laughs> I'm going to use epoxy with with fiberglass hairs in it. It's like they're chopped up fine. Okay, I've got them chopped up super fine. Like a dust almost. I put it in there to thicken it up. I'm just basically going to put it on the freaking, on this spline universal joint. Nothing freaking fancy. You know what I'm saying? I uh, just wanted to get it back going. I, I'm going to take the a couple of boats out in the next couple of days and I need a recovery boat. You know, I don't want this thing to be down. All right. I'm going to do it on, on, on the inside of both pieces. Okay, I'm going to go inside of it. All right. 
and just going to slide the universal joint in. Boom. Done. All right. Lock this bad boy right up for us. Okay. Boom. Done. Iron clad it out. It's the next day. All right. It's the next day. Everything's cured out. All right. Turned out pretty good, it looks like. Uh, I guess we won't know until we hit the water with it. Now, I'm going to give it an extra day before I take it out just so I know the epoxy set up uh, completely, you know. Um, we're going to get it installed back on the on the boat. But first, I just wanted to give you a comparison of 380-540-700. Okay, that's a big freaking motor. That's a big motor. 380 size motor, okay. That's a huge motor in this boat. It's got a lot of torque. Um, anything that gets on your propeller, it's definitely going to freaking do some do some grinding, you know. Uh, plastic on brass. Now, I also wanted to uh, share this. I put, this is like a free upgrade you could do. Um, I put a piece of foam in the boat. All right, I just shoved it up forward. This boat weighs about nine pounds, okay. Um, that foam is going to do some good, okay. Um, you could also get some foam in on on either side of the servo, which is probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a piece over here and a piece over here, just in case, just in case this workhorse uh, starts to go down. Heaven forbid! It's a heavy boat. It's gonna go quick. All right. Um, I also put foam in my hatch. All right. Put foam up here so that if the hatch gets knocked off with a limb or something, it's gonna it's gonna float it. Okay. So, um, I would definitely recommend that, alright? Also, also, if you pull this shaft past that stuffing tube, okay, you may have a hard time getting it back in the boat. What I did was I, I pulled it past, I was measuring the the shaft, alright, four millimeters. Um, what, I, what I had to do to get it back in through the, the stuffing tube there, uh, there's a little flange inside the stuffing tube. I loosened up these two screws right here on on that mount and just free the stuffing tube up that way I can finagle the shaft spin the shaft back in so uh, that may help somebody out all right um, yeah so if you don't need to pull the shaft out I wouldn't pull the shaft out of the stuffing tube now we're gonna set the distance the propeller is from the stuffing tube okay that see that nut right there on the leading edge of the propeller here um, you just want to make sure that that nut isn't like pushed up like grinding on your stuffing tube right here that may create a little heat um, there's gonna there's plenty of grease in the stuffing tube with that easy grease fitting so you shouldn't have to worry about water getting in the boat um, I would leave maybe I would leave about a millimeter if that a millimeter of gap something like that right there just so there's no friction on the on the stuffing tube and propeller uh, once you get that set, just uh, tighten down these two screws on your heat sink. Boom. All right. And you're done. All right. I used a flex driver. Okay. To get to these stuffing tube retainer screws back here. All right. Made quick work of it with a Phillips head screwdriver bit on. Also, it helped me out getting the grub screws off of this universal joint here. Okay. So that's a, that's, this flex driver is a blessing if you have rc boats very tight places you can get to them with ease okay so i'm gonna tighten this down and uh yeah 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 we'll we'll we'll, we'll spool it up see what she sounds like all right so uh so yeah i've got it i've got it all greased up okay i put a fuel line on my grease nipple just to keep grease out of the boat all right got battery in it my g2 3200 smart technology uh those batteries are freaking awesome you guys no more balance charging. No more balance leads. They're smart. They speak for themselves. All right, let's spool it up. That works. That works. That worked. All right, done. Done. Sounds good. You hear that hollow sound, man? That's that's one of the things that I love so much about this boat just sounds like it's chugging along when it's uh underway you know especially with this cap on oh that sounds good you guys that sounds good 
I think that's going to be a good fix. I really do. I think that's going to be possibly even a permanent freaking fix. All right. If you're having a problem with a universal joint, boom. Little things like the fuel line on the drive shaft nipple there, uh, double side taping the ESC down. Uh, you know, just um, just go through your boat, have some fun with it, have fun upgrading it, because uh, it, that's the only thing that's happened thus far. You know, four outings, just that that universal joint let loose on us, and uh, it was a free, cheap, fast fix. You know what I'm saying? This little box right here works really good for putting screws in, <laughs> a little tool, you know, parts and stuff. Had some fun with the with the adding the micro cord, give it a scale look. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, man, this thing's, uh, it's definitely fun. It's a head-turning boat. It's well worth the money. It's an investment. It's going to last you a long time. It's a recovery boat, and it also freaking, uh, you have fun with it, as you can see in my last couple videos with the family. I mean, it's a freaking fun boat. Uh, seems to be ironclad. It seems to be ironclad. I appreciate you guys watching. Big B with Ironclad RC, a channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. We'll see you guys next time. That'll do it. That'll do it.